when we think of alcohol, it's like our drinking alcohol. So we've got lots of varieties, right? We've got tequila, vodka, gin, rye, etc. Except for they are all, thank you, I'm sure you've got another one too, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> that list because in chemistry they're all the same thing in chemistry every single one of those is ethanol they're all a solution of ethanol and water all of them so what makes them different what gives them a different flavor is the source of that ethanol did you get that ethanol from grapes did you get it from rye did you get it from does that make sense hops so where you got that from, and even the type of grape that you got it from, gives the type of wine. But it's all ethanol. Okay, so ethanol, oops, let's see if I can get a writer. Ethanol, maybe not today, my own. Ethanol is what? C2 and H5 OH. Alright, C2, H5, OH. And so that's in every single drinking alcohol. And if you notice the percentages on the bottles, like wine is about 12%, that means I have 12 milliliters of ethanol in 100 mils of the solution. And so if you have a can of beer that's 385 mils, or whatever they are in this country, you can then figure out how many mils of ethanol you're drinking. Does that make sense? And if you drink pure ethanol, that can lead to blindness, and it can lead to, which is why, like, seriously, it can lead to death, which is why moonshine is, is, is dangerous, because you don't actually know what kind of percentage is in that. And even if you drink drank so much at a decent percentage, you then can lead to alcohol poisoning and et cetera as well, right? So, um, but in terms of like our general understanding of alcohol, they are all ethanol. In chemistry, when we talk about ethanol, or talk about alcohols, pardon me, I want you to think of ethanol as just two carbons, but really we've got uh, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons, six carbons, methyl groups branched off those carbons, ethyl groups, okay? Because that is, a, that is what an alcohol is when we're talking about organic chemistry. So the function group on an alcohol is Functional group is the OH. That's the thing that causes it to act like an alcohol. So we've just added a definition to our term, to our knowledge, the definition of functional group. What would be the functional group of an alkene? What makes an alkene react like an alkene? An alkene, the carbon-carbon double bond. An alkyne would be the triple bond. And so the alcohol function group is OH. The general formula then, we do it a little bit different. It's no longer your CNH2N sort of issue, although we could create a general formula like that. But they switch it to a different kind of notation where they say R, which means a hydrocarbon, OH. Because the thing is, R could be an alkene, R could be an alkyne, R could be an alkane. So it's pretty hard for us to go C, M, H, what? Okay? So therefore they just put R being hydrocarbon. And then, and actually, I shouldn't really say a hydrocarbon because it could have a chloride off of it as well. So a hydrocarbon or, or a hydrocarbon derivative. Derivative. Oops, the A in the wrong place. Okay. Okay, so R O H. Everybody fine with that? Do you use R and R prime in math yet? Yep. Yeah, do you? Yeah, so it's the same thing then. It's just holding a place value of a group of things. Is Abby the only one that does R and R prime in math? You guys are looking, the rest of you are looking like we're bonkers. It's derivative. A couple of us. Pardon? A couple of us. A couple. A couple. Calculus. 
In ca- oh, okay. Is it only in calculus that we use those? Like, when I can't remember. I do remember using them, but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, to identify the alcohol in a molecular formula, so molecular formula being the all the things crammed together, all the C's grouped together, all the H's grouped together. We write the OH together instead of writing that H with all the others. Okay, so this is what I mean by that. The molecular formula of this is then C2, which is ethanol, right? C2, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, OH. So that at a very quick glance, the person can look and say, oh, look, an OH must be an alcohol. I wouldn't write C2H6O. Does that make sense? So you don't kind of crown the H's with the others, like you think. This is different from a, where else have we seen OH? Uh, Bases. And when we write the OH there, this is different from a hydroxide ion. Because it is not, I should say an, I suppose, ion. Unless I was thinking of something else to put there. Oh, oh, I know. No, I was thinking of something else. It is not a base. It's not an ion either, but that's a true statement. But it's not a base. Less than base. Okay? It's not, about, it's not a base. So we can't think of it as OH minus. So one of the like curveballs that you get thrown in Chem 20 is identify which of the following is a base, right? And I'll have HCl, NaOH, C2H5OH, and H2SO4, or like NaCl or something like that. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And so you throw away the acid formula, you throw away the ionic co- compound formula, and you're left with this or sodium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide is a base, this is not. So they're not going to be Yes. Okay? All right, so the boiling point of alcohol is higher or lower than the corresponding alkanes. You tell me. Higher. Higher? Good. It's higher than the corresponding alkane. So. Ethanol will be a higher boiling point than ethane because of the extra intermolecular forces. Of which intermolecular forces in play here? I did wrong. Very good, guys. going to increase the size so you can see this a little bit. Okay, solubility. Short-chain alcohols in water is the solubility of short-chain water is high. Longer-chain alcohols have long... Okay, so you're comparing this. Two, three, four, five, OH versus, and it's intermolecular forces, or no, polarity, we're talking about polarity here. Polarity versus one OH. Okay, so in Chem 20, you would have learned that both of these molecules are polar. Everybody okay with that? And that like dissolves like. And so both of these will dissolve in water because they are both polar. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so the stretch then in Chem 30 is actually, here's your polar end, and here is your non-polar end. You okay with that? So this, because this is a non-polar end that's very long, the longer that non-polar end is, the less significance that tiny OH has, and the more non-polar of a molecule it would be. Therefore, the less soluble in water. Whereas this molecule is quite short, that OH has quite a lot of power, and so there, therefore it is very soluble in water. Okay? 
So the solubility of short chain alcohols in water is high, very soluble. Long, longer chain alcohols have a long what? Non-polar non section and therefore are not as soluble. Okay. Questions so far? All of the above have just been talking about what kind of property? Physical. Physical property. Good. Okay. You guys are being boring today. Can you talk more, please, for me? All right. Naming alcohols. Now we get into the naming bit. You first take the normal aliphatic name. What does aliphatic mean? The alkane, alkene, alkyne, the straight, straight chain alcohols we've been talking about. And cyclical as well, but they're kind of a unique, um, yeah, subcategory. Okay, so then we're going to drop the E off of the end. Okay, so ethane, drop the E. Ethene, drop the F E. Do you notice they all end in the end E, right? Alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes all end in an E. We're going to drop that E off. And we're going to add OL. And as soon as you see the name with the OL at the end, you know it's an alcohol. You know it must have an OH hanging off of one of the carbons. And so this one is called, how many car what would you call it if that wasn't an OH, but was the other an H? You would call that F A. A. So we're going to drop that E and we're going to add OL because there is an OH there. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So, and if needed, so it's not needed here, ethanol, because the OH is at the beginning carbon, no matter what side of which carbon I put it on, because it's the same molecule, just turned around. But sometimes if it's a longer carbon, I will need to tell the place of that OH. So it's indicated with the number before the all. So for example, here I have butan 1-all and butan 2-all, and have a go at drawing them in their little boxes that are there for you. Or like, not boxes, but spaces. Okay, so but... <coughs> uh, one, two, three, four. So I first draw my four Cs. Then one, so therefore on carbon one, I have an OH. Make sure, please, that your stick goes to the O. Okay, because why? Because it's attached to the O. And we, we can write OH like that, but we also understand that it's OH, right? But we tend to not write that stick, we tend to just shove them together. But you cannot have your stick on your H. Could write O like dash O dash H, or you could like write that. dash O H. That's right. As long as, but this you cannot write. You cannot write it like this. Let me get that C back. Okay. You see how that's wrong? Mm -hmm. Because that's telling me that you think it's H O, and now all of a sudden that H has two sticks on it, and that's not allowed. Okay, so you have to make sure your stick goes to the O. This, of course, concerns the people that are continuing on with their chemistry a lot more than it concerns those of you who this is the be all and end all. But anyway, the O goes underneath the C. Okay, you do need to know, regardless of whether you're taking this in the future, that O needs two sticks. I need to get one. Yes? Can you like the last slide of this thing? Doesn't matter where it is, because remember when we like remember those moles that we built? Like I could turn it any way, and it wouldn't matter. It's the same molecule, so I don't. It doesn't matter if I've got the stick down below, or if you've got the OH here, or if you had it out the side. And it doesn't matter if it's on this carbon instead, because that would be the same molecule just turned around. Okay. And then the rest get hydrogens, H3, H2, H2, <coughs> H2 on that OH carbon, right? And so the molecular form would then be C4, H2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, OH. Okay? 
And butane, 2 all one, two, three, four, OH there. So H3's at the end, H2, H in the middle. So this is C4, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, OH. These are what of each other? Isomers of each other. They are different compounds, different structures, different names, but the same molecular form. You agree with that? Could you have a butan 3 all? No. Because? Good. Could you have a butan 4 all? No, because it's the same as 1 all. Good. Everybody all right with that? The number goes in the middle just like you did with the double bonds, the triple bonds. Nothing new, really. Okay, so using dies and tries if you need to. This one, there's a little hiccup that you kind of need to pay attention to. If you're using dies and tries, it works the same thing as it did for our dienes. Okay, so no different there, except for the little tiny thing that, that you need to remember is that you do not drop that E off of ethene or ethane. You don't drop that finally, you leave it on there. And then you put di on. It has to do with not having two vowels together, and that's why we dropped the E in the first place. Okay, because it would have been ethane ol, two vowels together. They're not happy with that, so they said let's drop the e. But all of a sudden, when you have diol, oh, that's not a vowel anymore, so I can leave the e in there. Yeah. Okay. But just with diol, not with uh, and triol and tetraol because they're all constants now and all of that. That's why I put etc. Okay, so diol, triol, etc. Okay? I don't think the exam board would ever give you uh, multiple choice answers that had two answers, one with the E and one without. Okay? I don't, they're not, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think they're that pedantic. They want to just make sure they, that you know, how to name an alcohol in general, right? However, can organic one in university, you bet. That professor will mark you 100% wrong if you chuck your E in there. All right, so let's learn it right the first time. Okay, so here's a structural formula, which is a skeletal diagram. So that's something the exam board loves. They love putting skeletal diagrams in there. They just love it. They're all over the place. So really become very comfortable with your skeletal diagrams. And so, uh, what would you name this? There's a methyl there. So the first thing you might want to do is just convert that into looking a bit more normal. Okay? So I'm going to put a C on every join and every end, like that. Okay? So that's the first, bless you. That's the first thing I would do on the paper, is I'd put my C's there. Then, ignoring the OH's, where's your longest chain? Four, yes? So therefore, it's butane. Are you that? There is a methyl, Emily has said. It's here. It's on carbon two. two. And then to the ends, everybody okay so far with 2-methylbutane? So we would have named it 2-methylbutane. That's what we would have named it last week. This week, I'm checking some OHs on there, and I'm telling you, take off that E at the end and put in on carbon 1 and carbon 3, sorry, and carbon 3. So on carbon 1 and carbon 3, I have two, that's a die, OHs. Oh, that you should stay on. I wasn't paying attention. Yes. So when we're numbering, do we order it in number of the bonds, then the methyls, then the OHs, or do you do? No, I would do this. One, two, three, four. So therefore, I've got something with carbon one, I've got something with carbon two, and I've got something with carbon three. Yeah, but like when you're trying to find the lowest number. Yeah. So therefore, they add up to six. Yeah. Or if I numbered it the other way, one, two, and then carbon two. 
three, something will cover three. Four, something will cover four, or four, and that adds up to nine. Yeah. Therefore, the red naming system is bad, or numbering system, and the blue numbering system is the winner. Yeah, but like sometimes don't you run into problems where like if you name it with the OHs, then you're gonna get a bigger number versus if you name it with the methanols being a bigger number. I don't name it with the methanols or the OHs. I name I number it with the lowest addition. Yeah, yeah, but like you get the same sometimes. Oh, if you add yeah. if you have the same total? Yeah, yeah, like you if you have the same total, there are you normally put them in order that the uh, you put them in alphabetical for the branches. Yeah. So the F would get the lower number than the math. Okay. You would give the alkene the lowest number. Okay. So and that would take priority over the methyls or ethyls. Yeah. So the double bond would get the lowest number, and the OH would also get the lowest number as priority. But I'm not good, like first year university, that's when you sort, sort that out, maybe even second year university, but certainly not at this stage. At this stage, I would mark you 100% right for either numbering system. Okay, as long as you picked the lowest one, yeah. I'm happy. All right. Okay. Okay, but the functional group gets the lowest number if there's a tie. That's the, that's like a shortcut. Yeah. Not always, but basically that. Okay, so uses. Ethylene glycol. Who's heard of ethylene glycol out there? Just, Abby's on a roll today, the rest of you are Monday morning sleeping. Okay, ethylene glycol, FA12-diol is what it's called, is used to manufacture polyester and PET plastics. Have you ever noticed on plastics, have you ever looked at the recycling symbols? And if you look at the bottom of the plastic, there'll be like the arrows, right? I don't remember which direction the arrows go in anymore, but anyway. Um, and there'll be like a one or a two in the middle of that triangle. And you know what I mean? And sometimes there's a PET. And all of those things tell you what type of plastic it, it is, which tells you what type of polymer it came from, which tells the manufacturers how to recycle it. Okay, so when they're dividing it all up, they when they're recycling, they put all the plastics into a barrel, and based on their solubilities, like their floating ability, that's how they separate the plastics. And so the one group, you know, the triangle one plastics will go to one place, the triangle two plastics will go to another place, because they'll have a different density of floating. And so, uh, what was the point of that? Oh yeah, just that ethylene glycol, FA12-diol makes PET plastics, okay? Which is a polyethylene, I can't remember what the T stands for. Okay, types. Okay, so primary alcohols and secondary alcohols. Oh, um, by the way, just before I, there are a few words that you need to know, right? A few of these special names that you need to know and then the rest of them you can kind of throw away. So ethylene glycol is one word that you need to recognize, and recognize that is FA12-diol. But what was the other one from the alkene unit? Uh, ethylene, which is ethene. Okay, they like to put, they like to give you that one too. Okay. And that is in your notes, your package, my bastards did, you circled it. Okay, primary alcohol. If it's a primary alcohol, the OH, this is a bit, this is gonna sound a bit wordy, but it, that's what it is, and then we'll show an example, and you'll be like, oh, that's easy. So, it's when the OH is bonded to a carbon, obviously, right? But that carbon is bonded to one other carbon. So it can't be so more than Right. And a secondary alcohol is when the OH is bonded to a carbon, and that carbon is bonded to two other carbons. So for example, for example, here's an OH, it's bonded to a carbon. Okay? And that carbon is bonded to one other carbon. And no other carbons. So what must the other sticks be then? Hydrogen. Hydrogens. Can that chain keep going though? Yeah. yeah. 
And so this is H2, this is H2, this is H2, this is H3, and this is cold. This is cold. Pent. Pent. Name it like it's the normal thing first. Paint ain. Drop the E. Then one all. Okay. Everybody okay with primary alcohols? So normally like tagging on the ends. The very end of the chain. Secondary alcohols. The OH is bonded to a carbon. And that carbon is bonded to two other carbons. Or like that. And so that means that the red carbon must have what bonded onto that side? One hydrogen. And like Kirsten's other question, yes, I could keep going on both sides. Okay, so I could keep going here, another carbon, another carbon, and here, another carbon, and put your hydrogens on properly and you're done. Okay, so that OH is bonded to a carbon, which is bonded to two other carbons. And so this would be called one, two, three, four, five, six. Hexane. Three. All. Okay. A tertiary alcohol, so primary, we often start for it as one degree, secondary is two degree, tertiary is three degree. And I'm gonna click this board, and it's all gonna disappear, so I hope you have it written down. Tertiary alcohol is when the OH is bonded to a carbon, and that carbon is bonded to three other carbons. So for example, here's your OH, it's bonded to a carbon, and that carbon is bonded to one, two, three carbons. And then you can expand if you like, right? On all four, on all three of those carbons, you can put another carbon, but I'll just put one this way and one this way, and I'll leave that as just a methyl.
13, 14 hydrogens, so therefore 7. And then I've got 12 and 7 make 19 oxygens. 12 and 7 make 19, right? So therefore, 19 halves and no, 2. Oh, yeah. Except for that's no there, so I need 18 left. Thank you. Good catch. I need 18 left. And so therefore, Why is this pentanol? Yeah. Because the longest chain will go this way. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I've got a branch off of it. Okay. Is that like, is, it, is there a um, one, two, three, four, five? Okay. Right. What do you think it should be? Okay. If, if it was just this, one, two, three, four, five, with the carbon, like that, what would you call that? What would you name that? Pentane. Right? And you would name it 3 methyl pentane. Yeah. Now I'm going to put an OH on here, and I'm going to name it. Is there a line it between, the, between the, the two on the right? And two on the right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So beside each other, there just needs to be a line. Yeah, that's why I was confused. Okay. Andy, I need you to stay awake, please. Okay. <coughs> Elimination. It's the opposite of hydrolysis or addition. So write your structure for ethanol, write your structure for ethene, and write your structure for water underneath those words. but I'm not going to draw them on. Goes to ethene, like that, and HOH to make your water. You see that? So therefore, if this was one, two carbons on this side and one carbon on that side, I'd have to have one, two carbons on that side and one carbon on that side. The double bond has to come where that OH is. Elimination is the opposite of hydrolysis addition. Did you get that? Hydrolysis addition, we broke double bonds, we had a spot to put our OH, a spot to put our H. This is just taking them off. Yes? Is the double bond go to the left of where the OH goes? Or the you could decide. Okay. So if I told you to take that hydrogen off, now it's going to the left. If I told you you're taking that hydrogen off, it goes to the right. And you know those lovely questions where they say, um, uh, write the two possible products, right? Those would be two possible products. Okay. On the left or on the right, double bond. Alcohols are prepared by addition or hydrolysis reactions. You've already seen this. This is in your alkene unit, right? So you take an alkene, one, two, three, four, and a double bond in the middle, let's say. And I can add H2O to it. And do you see how here, though, Lindsay, the OH must appear on the middle carbon. I cannot tag it on the end. You gotta break the bond, you gotta add the OH where that double bond had broken, where I've got a spot to add it to. So C, 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 ooh, another one. There you go. And then the rest hydrogens, yeah. Okay. So we've seen that one, I'm just showing it to you again because now we are actually highlighting the alcohol bit, so just sort of tying those two things together. And bless you, you've also seen this before, we just didn't write it the opposite direction. Um, yeah, in order to do this, you need a, you need a, a catalyst, like um, concentrated sulfuric acid, it's a good one. Okay, so and then fermentation or uh, 
preparation by fermentation of glucose. So this is your, um, this is you know your wheat that you're making into a beer. You would or your grapes that you're making into wine, and you take the sugar in that compound, C6H12. The sugar is then fermented with yeast, warmth, and lack of oxygen, which is called anaerobic conditions. So you take all of those things and you can get the ethanol and carbon dioxide. So you get all this foamy sludge at the top, which they scrape off and make into marmite or vegemite, if you know what that is. That's, what that, that's where that comes from. It's the sludge off of the beer production they decided to use in war times because it's got a lot of nutrients in it. And they thought, you know what? War times are war times. Let's make use of this sludge. And people still eat it. I don't, do you like alcohol? it, Craig? No. No, no, there's no alcohol. It's all the carbon dioxide bubble yeast from it. Yeah, it sounds disgusting. It smells disgusting. You either love it or hate it. That's their, actually their slogan. You either love it or hate it. Um, <laughs> and that is true. Anybody else know Marmite or Vegemite out there? Do you love it or hate it? Hate it, you're okay. <laughs> a little smithering with some cheese is alright, but the rest, okay. Okay, um, but this is the best thing. So let's say you live in a country that um, would need to buy their alcohol, or, or pardon me, buy their um, crude oil from another country because they don't have any crude oil resources. So they can, yeah, they can ferment their corn stalk, for example, okay, and make ethanol. Good, okay, now what do they do with that? Well, the ethanol can then be, under an elimination reaction, produce ethene, right? So you can take that ethanol, C3H, or pardon me, CH3, CH2OH, and you can rip off the OH in one of those hydrogens and make C double bond C, plus water, just like we wrote above, right? And then I can take the ethene and I can undergo hydrogenation. So I take my double bond and I add, what's hydrogenation? Adding what? Hydrogen. Adding hydrogen. And what's gonna happen? I get ethane. Right, with those two hydrogens now here. I can make sugar into gasoline and into heating, like methane for heating homes and propane for propane tanks and propane tanks in cars. And all of a sudden, I can produce my own oil, albeit this is expensive and hard to do because you, know, you need a lot of catalysts, a lot of heat, a lot of energy in order to get these reactions to happen. But if you're in an inner country, Africa, and you're at war with all the countries around you, and they are holding their gas supplies from you, or if you're in Chechnya, and they hope the Russians just stop the gas flow to your country in the dead of winter, it's not a very, it's a very vulnerable place to be in. It's not a very secure place to be in. So if they can make their wheat crops turn into gasoline, presto, they're now self-sufficient. That's one method of becoming self-sufficient. There are lots of different methods, but there is one. Okay? You can go, can you go the other way too? You can go the other way too, yes. Yes, it takes more energy though to do it that way, yeah, but. Um, which is, do you know, do you know Mohawk? They're kind of around sometimes some places. They used to boast that their energy was mixed, that their, um, that their uh, fuel was mixed with ethanol because then they're half environmental. They've grown half of it, and they've produced half of it, which is a nice way of allowing our oils to just expand a little longer in time. Andy, do you need to leave? Pardon? Do you need to leave? May I? Do you need to leave? Yes. May I? Yes. OK, so here, that's it for alcohols. Okay, that is the learning. Here are some questions for you to, per, to help identify that information. Instead of giving you a sheet, I've kind of just written up some questions. But I've also given you a sheet on the naming bit. Okay, so you've got these questions and then the naming sheet that comes after this 
in the package. And then that should be good for alcohols. And tomorrow we begin carboxylic acids. Okay.